things, what do you think about this surface right here? I just bought this new cutting mat to put on the table since I'm kind of tired of rubbing my arms on bare plywood and getting splinters all up in here. It wasn't fun, but I've dealt with it for so long and I finally pulled the trigger on getting this cutting mat, which is uh, really nice. It's absolutely massive and it gives me a new kind of surface to film on, which I think will break up the monotony of the wood. I'll have a link to this exact one down in the description if you want to check out this exact model I'm using. But I can say it's very, very nice and comfortable. It's incredibly thick. The other side is the inverse of this, so it's white then gray. Let me know if you think that's better than the gray and white. I kind of wanted the darker contrast to make things pop out a little bit more. But of course, I would like some feedback on that one because, uh, yeah, that's important for, you know, doing videos and stuff like that. But I happen to think it looks pretty good, so let me know. But on towards what we're actually going to talk about here, which is, of course, the rear-loading gates for the Worker Hurricane mags. These are tiny little 3D-printed pieces. These were given to me by my friend Greg. That allows you to not only see how much ammo you have left in your magazine when it's in the blaster, but also rear-load them to a degree. I will say straight up front, this is not a magical cure-all because of how these magazines work. Uh, there's only so much you can do rear loading wise, but it does save you a bit of time. And for something that's meant to be a sidearm secondary and happens to be, in my opinion, the best sidearm slash secondary you can have in the entire hobby, yeah, that might be worth doing. And I don't know if anybody sells these pieces. I'll have a link down in the description to this exact file from Woody7070, but it's like barely any filament at all, really easy to print out. And it's a really quick mod that will give you some added functionality without really taking any away. Even if you don't really want to use the rear loading, I don't think you're going to have a problem with it. So I've already done it to two mags here, and that's kind of why you're seeing this video, because I did it to one mag, and you can kind of notice the problem here is that this little loading gate thing is twisted like that, and this one's kind of in the perfect spot. And well, I didn't realize that like you can move the loading gate thing. I think that's important to make the maximum functionality of these come out. And honestly, I didn't realize I could do that at the time. So the tools you're gonna want, you're gonna want a screwdriver of some description to undo these four screws on the back. You're gonna want some kind of hobby knife if you're printing these out, because chances are this is gonna be too tight to fit on there. You're probably gonna have to cut it out a little bit. And I would recommend some kind of rubber hammer to kind of force them on, because it needs to be tight enough that it stays on there, but not loose enough that it would fall off by any imagination. So it's really easy. You start off by just unscrewing the four screws on the back of the magazine. And I'm already tired of this. There we go. This is under spring tension, so you're gonna remove that last screw. It will spin around. That is fine. And you're gonna wanna be able to pry this off. You could use your hobby knife, like mine has this little toe on the bottom of it that lets me pry stuff up with it because I guess people realize that they probably use these for prying a lot, so they put that on mine, which is nice, but you can use a flathead screwdriver or any small implement. And then you're going to want to remove the little winding spring. And it's important to note that the winding spring winds counterclockwise. That's gonna be important later, but we can remove this plate right here and we've got the entire cylinder right here. So you've got the little cylinder right here. Just make sure that goes in there. There's little tabs on the bottom of this. There's one of them that's flat, and there's another one right here that's circular. The flat one is where it's going to rest on the first chamber, and then you're going to twist it, and then the circular tab is going to stop it from twisting anymore so you don't overturn the magazine. So make sure when you put that in there, the back of the flat triangle thing is resting against that tab inside. That'll make things a lot easier on you, and well, that's how it works. And then we're gonna take our loading gate here, and we're gonna kinda put that on. But as you can notice, this uh, not really pointing in the direction you would probably like, to be perfectly honest. So we are going to grab something. You can do this by hand. It's a little finicky. So uh, now maybe on this one, it's actually really easy. Huh, I just turned it a lot. Yeah, this one's actually pretty easy. The other one I had was really difficult to do this here, but you're gonna wanna make sure that rests kind of on the cylinder right next to your first loading one. So here's the triangle, here's the circle, here's the second loading gate. So when I put that in there, like so, the actual thing should be pointing over this cylinder right here. So make sure that that's kind of where you want it, because that's going to make it the easiest to work this thing and the easiest to load. 
There we go. Now we're gonna put in two of our screws. Now make sure you don't over tighten these screws because that will put a lot of friction on the cylinder and it will not make things work out well for you. I don't know why I'm using a normal screwdriver. I have power. There we go. Now we're gonna grab our spring. And again, you wanna make sure this winds counterclockwise. So it's really easy. Just make sure it curls in one direction and it's going to fit in between the cylinder here. It's got a little gap in it. We can use our hobby knife to kind of make sure that splits apart for us because it's probably tight after we've twisted that knob around. But we're gonna fit this in there like so. And then we're going to twist it so it coils up neatly on itself. And then we're going to catch it in any one of these four directions. However, I think the best spot to catch it is all the way over here, pointing towards the finals, the sixth dart cylinder on it. And I'll explain why in a little bit. So I'll just make sure that rotates. Mine is currently not rotating. And I'm not quite certain why that is. I think this might be a bit too tight for my, the print might be slightly misshapen. There we go, I found myself getting this to work, kind of pressing in on this, making sure everything's nice and flat. There we go, that's how it should work. And now we need to put this little thing on and most likely it's, yeah, it's not gonna fit on there standard. Although we have the knife here, we're just gonna run it, kind of widen that hole a little bit, especially in this little opening up here at the front where it points. You're just gonna kind of run your knife around the edge, not all the way inside, just around the perimeter and make sure that you remove a little bit of that material so you can fit this on and get rid of any burrs so it will fit on there smoothly. And then hopefully we can kind of get it started a little bit. And if you can't even get it started, it's probably still too tight. But that worked out for me and I'm just gonna tap it really lightly with this hammer. Not too hard or anything, just hard enough to kind of bend it on there. Just like that. And now it's installed perfectly. So what we can do now is put this magazine on the hurricane, make sure it fits in place and everything like that. And here's how you have to reload your hurricane through the rear loading slots. Now again, doesn't work the best with these because the heads don't really guide into place all that well. I found myself kind of, if they don't fit in immediately, just kind of twisting the dart with my finger and it seems to catch into a place and I can force it down which is pretty useful, but you do have to rotate the magazine all the way and then you can just hold it. Now, obviously I can only rotate to these five cylinders over here. I can't reach the sixth cylinder or what would be the first cylinder it would fire in. So you can only rear load a maximum of five. And if you don't twist the magazine first, you're not gonna have a working magazine at all. So keep that in mind. So while I was editing, I came up with a crazy idea watching the footage. What would happen if I removed the circular stop notch that would prevent you from reaching this? It would stop right here normally, but if you remove the circular notch, wouldn't that let it move forward more? And it does. And the question now remains, can I now load, since I can technically rotate it seven spots instead of six, so that way I can overcompensate for the one slot I can't reach. Can I now rear load every single cylinder? So if I twist that all the way, it normally stops right there on the bottom. Now mine's gonna stop a little bit farther over and I can still put my finger in there. And it's still, I have it in the perfect position to where I can still reach that chamber just fine. That dart's a little worn out. So now I should be able to let go and now it's wound up to where it was before with it still falling on that empty chamber down there, except for now it's not empty. Now it's got a dart in it. And now theoretically I should be able to rear load. Oh, this one's a little tough. Uh, can we get it? Uh, I mean, there's really no reason why I couldn't. It's just the dart one doesn't want to fit. Come on, there we go. And now I should be able to shoot all six darts. Perfect. 
So, just remove, I cut it with a knife, my hobby knife, just remove the little cylinder slot, keep the triangle one with the flat end so it will still catch back like that, but the circular one can go, that way you can over tighten the magazine. Woo! I'm happy when something works. I am, that, ah, gosh. But it's a really simple mod that does give you some functionality, even if you don't plan on using the rear loading, at least you can see how many darts you have, and it's stylish, it looks good. And, well, that's probably one of the more important things about it, but again, so cheap, you could do this to every single magazine you have. The magazines themselves aren't that expensive. The 3D printed parts, again, I don't know of a reseller that uses these, but just print out the file or have somebody print it out for you. Put them on all your mags. There's really no reason not to, in my opinion, unless you want to try to keep dirt and debris out of your mag, which could be an issue depending on what you're playing. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this quick little easy mod that adds uh, something awesome to an already awesome pistol. I still think the Hurricane is the best pistol in the entire hobby, bar none. So anything that makes it better is good in my book. I just kind of wish it wasn't so fugly, in my opinion. Ugh, the Hurricane is so good. I'm Allcoma7, thank you very much for watching this video, and of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different one. You gotta 